everyone. I'm Meredith Morakovitz alongside Jack Curry coming to you from sunny Tampa, Florida. Jack, could you ask for a better day for some baseball? This was another terrific day. I, I left the hotel this morning and I, and I actually brought a jacket with me. And as oh. you, your attire and my attire shows, no need for a jacket. It's 80 degrees. It's beautiful. It's another terrific day in spring training. And it was certainly a great environment earlier today. Big showcase on the main field. Garrett Cole throwing to hitters for the first time this spring. And there are probably about, what, 800, 900,000 people in here watching, cheering them on. It was a nice crowd, and it was the most buzz we've seen in spring training so far. And Garrett Cole lived up to the hype. In his first simulated game, he struck out the first four batters that he faced. Obviously, I'm just having some fun with that. This is about getting his reps in. But Meredith, I'm so interested in the way he goes about his business. Even so much as when he started throw his warm-ups, he threw a couple of warm-ups, and then he took a couple of steps forward because his landing spot wasn't exactly what he wanted it to be. I know that's minute. I know other pitchers do it, but I'm watching this guy so closely, and there's such a meticulous quality to everything that he does. It was all fastball change today, and he was asked a little bit about it afterwards in the clubhouse, and he broke down an entire situation about how he wouldn't throw a change up to a guy who didn't even take a fastball or he hadn't shown the fastball to yet. It was just funny to watch and even a simulated game situation where he was so dialed in, wanted people to know that that's not a pitch he'd normally throw. He just needed to throw a certain number of change ups. You are going to be in heaven when he pitches games this season because you're going to be in the clubhouse asking him about it and you are going to get some detailed answers because this guy loves pitching. We saw that today. And one other thing that I like about him is I've watched reporters go over and introduce themselves to him, and he will ask, who do you work for again? What do you do? I want to know the names of all the beat writers. And that's something that you notice, that he's getting more and more comfortable with his surroundings. Obviously, knowing the names of the writers, that's not going to win him any games. But I think it's just one more element of who this guy is and how much he embraces wanting to be a Yankee. He did joke a few more names to learn than in yes, Pittsburgh yes. or Houston. And Brian Hoke of MLB.com went up to introduce himself today. And he said, hi, I'm Brian. He said, yes, from MLB.com. New already. That yes. was pretty interesting. He certainly is in tune with everything that's going on around Yankee universe. But he wasn't the only one that threw. Jordan Montgomery was also there. And it seems as though he's worked a lot this offseason to make sure he puts himself in a position to potentially be the fifth starter. Right. When Garrett Cole finishes, it's sort of everyone's attention gets diverted and you're watching where Cole goes. But you're absolutely right, Meredith. The, a guy who was probably going to be in their starting rotation followed him in Montgomery. And when you have Tommy John surgery, there is a lot of downtime. There is a lot of time where you simply can't even pick up a ball. So every time I see Montgomery out there in a situation like this, I just think of the total relief that he must be experiencing to know how much closer he is to being able to resume his major league career at the level he wants to resume it. Now, Aaron Boone spoke a little bit about Jordan Montgomery. I asked him, coming off of that Tommy John surgery, would there be any type of an innings limit for him? And you have to believe they certainly will bring him along slowly, even though he did come back for a short while last year. But you can't imagine that he's going to have a full workload in his first year back. Probably not. The Yankees are always conservative with injured players, especially injured pitchers. We know how many injuries they dealt with last season. I think you're right, Meredith. I think you are careful with his workload. But if you're that fifth starter in April with the off days that are slotted in there for potential rain and things like that, sometimes the fifth starter is the guy who, who might get skipped once or twice. So I, I think Montgomery has a chance to be a, a big-time contributor for the Yankees. I loved when he was first up just how smart he was for yeah. a young pitcher, that he was outthinking the hitters in a lot of situations. Doesn't have that blow-you-away stuff that a lot of other guys have, but he has the smarts to go with the stuff that he does have. And as someone that's in the clubhouse just about every day, you can just tell he's been so much more comfortable mm -hmm. as the years have gone on. You can tell he fits in a, a little better now. He feels like he fits in, I would think, a, a little bit better now. Uh, anything else stand out to you today? I just think that you're, you're watching the Yankees go about their business. Um, I, I'm fascinated by some of the technology that has crept into the game. I asked Aaron Boone about this. If you want to Google Rapsodo, it's a pitching device that can help uh, deal with spin access and spin rate. And, and bullpen sessions, it's there. When Garrett Cole and the other pitchers mm -hmm. were pitching uh, 
today it was there. And I just asked Aaron Boone, how quickly are you getting that information and disseminating it? And he said, yeah, it's, it's a whole new world. Some of the technology and some of the information is even new for him. But what he likes, Meredith, is that the pitchers are embracing it. The yeah. pitchers want that information. And if it's information that's going to make you better and make you tougher to hit, you absolutely should embrace it. And I actually spoke with Matt Blake today. That'll be coming up on Yankees Access in March. But he spoke a little bit about the technology, yeah. how they're using it, what they can see from it, and how it helps pitchers. But one thing he wanted to get across was the fact that they are not forcing pitchers to use this. They just want them to know if they want to dive into it, it's available. They'll make sure they're set up with it, and they'll walk them through the process to possibly find ways to make them better. I'm glad you were able to ask that question and get that answer from him because that is one of the things I've thought about. There are some pitchers I'm sure who have their own routine and might not need all of that information to be better than who they are. So the fact that the Yankees are offering it but maybe not force feeding it, I think that's the right way to go. Well, I think that's going to do it. But before we go, I complimented your white shoes, your Stan Smith. And, yes. man, did you have a situation yesterday, not not even an hour after you left. Shortly after you complimented them, I, I spilled a big gob of peanut butter, don't ask how, on the left <laughs> shoe. But I went to the hotel, and the first thing I did before I did anything else was to make sure I cleaned those sneakers up so they're, they're back in working order. And, by the way, nice, uh, nice yes polo shirt that See you're rocking that? today for See your that? Matt Blake interview. I like there it. There we go. Team uniform. Marakovitz is ready. 